Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry and craft making blog, amyromeo.com, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make faux leather earrings with the Cricut Joy. If you have a Joy and you've been wondering if you can make faux leather earrings just like you can with the Explore Air 2 and the Cricut Maker, well I'm here to show you how, step by step. So if you're ready, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button and let's get started. Let's go over the materials we're going to use to make this project. I'll also link to all the materials in the description box below. So the first thing you're gonna need is a Cricut Joy Machine. Faux leather in the colors of your choice. I'm using three different colors because this is a three layer design. A green Cricut Joy cutting mat. Cricut brand strong grip transfer tape if you're using chunky glitter faux leather. Blue painter's tape. Craft scissors. A weeding tool. A 1 16th inch hole punch. Two pairs of jewelry making pliers. Two earring hooks and jump rings or ball ear wire hooks that don't require tools. And the other thing you'll need is the earring SVG cut file. If you wanna make these same feather designs, I have that file available in my shop and I'll link that below in the description box. But you can also use any earring cut file you already have or you can use one that's free on Cricut Design Space. Now I'm gonna show you how to bring the earring SVG cut file into Cricut Design Space. But first, because this is a project we're making with the Cricut Joy, you'll wanna make sure before you get started that the Joy is your selected machine at the top of Cricut Design Space because that's gonna determine some settings as we go. So we're gonna click on New Project and then Upload, Upload Image, and I'm gonna browse for the file. So if you got my uh, Feather Earring SVG template, it's gonna download as a folder that's zipped and you'll need to unzip it before you can access the files inside. I'm gonna be using the Earring 1 version, no holes. I'll click open and we'll see a preview of the file and I'm gonna save. Click on it here and click insert images. That's gonna bring it into my canvas. So I always like to drag my earring files up to the top left corner and if you want to change the size of the design, you can click on this arrow button here and drag it bigger or smaller. You can also adjust the size up here by changing the numbers in the size boxes. And finally, since this is a three layer design, if you don't wanna cut all three layers, you can click the eye to hide the layers that you don't wanna cut. But I'm gonna cut all three of them in the size as shown. So next you'll hit the make it button. And the Cricut Joy has different options for cutting. You can cut without a mat on a Cricut Joy if you use the Cricut Smart Materials, which is pretty cool. But we're gonna be cutting faux leather on a mat. So I'll select on mat. And then we're gonna see a mat preview of each of the three layers of our earrings. And here we can see the size material we're gonna need to cut for each of the layers. So. What I like to do while I'm scrolling down here through my three mats, I like to make a note of what size material I need for each layer. So for this layer, for example, I'm gonna need a piece of faux leather about two and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. Just gonna scroll down through. I like to mirror each of my mats. It's just force of habit. For this project, it's not necessary, but it's a good thing to do. The important thing to remember is either you mirror all three of the mats or you don't mirror any of them. In this case, I'm gonna mirror them. Again, making a note on each mat what size material we need to cut. And then I'll press continue. Design Space is gonna to connect to the Joy with Bluetooth. And then we're gonna be on our material screen. So. The setting we're gonna use for all three of these mats is the faux leather paper thin setting. I already have it set here as a, one of my favorites because I have the little yellow star checked. But if you don't have faux leather paper thin as a material, you'll wanna click on browse all materials. And up here in the search box, you'll type faux leather. It'll pop up and you'll click on it to select it. Here's that little yellow star if you wanna hit that to save it as a favorite and done. In the pressure setting, 
I always like to choose more as the pressure setting when I'm cutting faux leather, just to give it that little extra assistance, but that may or may not be necessary for your machine. And I'm gonna click this remember material settings since we will be cutting all three mats with the same material settings. The joy is gonna remind us that we need the fine point blade, which is already installed in the machine, and it's gonna tell us to load the mat. So now we're gonna prepare our mats so we can get to the next step. So the first layer of the earrings is gonna cut from chunky glitter, faux leather. It's not technically faux leather, it has a canvas backing, but the glitter's fun, but it kind of flakes off and you don't want all that glitter getting stuck to your sticky Cricut mat. So I'm gonna show you a cool trick that I like to do to protect my mats. And I'm gonna use Cricut brand strong grip transfer tape. I like the strong grip version because it's very sticky and I'm gonna use that to cut a, a piece just larger than the faux leather shape that I cut. And I figured out the faux leather shape by looking at my mat preview screen and going by that size. So you're gonna peel the sticky part of the transfer tape off the backing. The back is very sticky. And you're gonna place that sticky side up on your mat in the location that your earring shapes are gonna cut out of and try and press it down and get it to stick really well to your mat all over. Then you're gonna take your glitter faux leather and you're gonna flip it over so the glitter side is down and you're gonna press that onto the sticky strong grip transfer tape. Press it down all over. And you can kind of see how the strong grip transfer tape is on the outside of the faux leather glitter. And that's gonna protect your mat from getting glitter all over it. Then I'm gonna use blue painter's tape and just tape down all four edges of the glitter faux leather. And when you tape this smaller edge, if there's some tape that overlaps, you're gonna to wanna to fold it over, bend it over so that it doesn't get caught up in your machine. Press it down all over one more time and then you're gonna load it into the Cricut Joy. And then Cricut Design Space will prompt you to press the go button. Once you press the go button, it'll start thinking and then it'll start to cut. When the cut's complete, Design Space is gonna ask you if you wanna recut the mat or if you wanna unload it. So I always like to use my weeding tool and double check, make sure that the cut went all the way through before I unload the mat because I can always recut it if necessary. But this faux leather cut out nicely with just one series of cuts. So I'm gonna unload the mat and use my weeding tool to pull the earring shapes off of the mat with the, with the sharp end of the weeding tool. And it's a little hard to see, but there is some loose glitter that's stuck, but it's stuck to the strong grip transfer tape. It's not stuck to your mat, which is great. And you're gonna peel up your blue painter's tape. I like to reuse it. You can reuse it a couple of times actually. So I like to peel it up and reuse it. So back in Cricut Design Space, we're ready to cut the second mat. And I just wanted to point out that when you're cutting a multi-layer design, Cricut Design Space doesn't always cut them in the order of the layers. So for this earring, the first mat that cuts is the top layer, but the second mat that cuts is the bottom layer, and the third mat that cuts is the middle. So you'll wanna be paying attention as you're cutting your mats so you can match it up to the faux leather that you want each layer to be. So I've already cut mat one, which shows the little check mark here, and I'm gonna click here on the second mat. I can hover over it with my mouse and I can see the size material that I need to cut. So for this bottom layer, which is the largest layer, we're gonna need a piece of faux leather about three inches square. I'm gonna double check that my mirror setting is on, my setting is still faux leather paper thin, and the pressure is more. So we're ready to prepare our second mat and load it into the Cricut. And then once we do that, this go button will light up and we'll be able to press it and cut the second mat. For the second layer, that we're gonna cut, I'm gonna use this really cool textured faux leather that I found on Etsy. It has a cool pattern on the front and kind of a cottony back. 
I'm gonna press it to my joy size mat. And I don't need to use any strong grip transfer tape to protect the mat because this material is not gonna ruin my mat. I'm gonna recycle my little strips of blue painter's tape, tape down on all four sides, just like before. I'm gonna load the mat and then I'll press the go button and let it do its thing. When the cut is finished, again, I'll double check and make sure that the cut went through all the way. And this one did. So I'll go ahead and unload the mat by clicking on Unload in Cricut Design Space and just peeling off our shapes. The third layer is going to cut just like the first two layers did. I'm going to use this pebbled metallic faux leather on Amazon. It has a soft back, but it still cuts really well. And I just trimmed a shape to the size shown in my mat preview screen for the third mat. Taped it all around on the sides with blue painter's tape. And then I loaded the mat in and pressed the go button. When the cut's finished, again, I check to make sure that the cut went all the way through with my weeding tool, and it did. So I'm gonna unload the mat and remove the shapes, and then we'll be ready to assemble our earrings. So I'm gonna show you two ways to put on earring hooks. The first is called a ball ear wire hook, and it doesn't require any tools, which is pretty cool. The earring shapes just slide on. And the second is a traditional earring hook, and we are going to use pliers and a jump ring to make those earrings. So first we're going to start with the ball ear wire hook, and it's really easy to use. You're just going to pick up your earring shapes and thread them onto the wire of the earring hook and pull them down all the way. And that's it. You have an earring, and you didn't have to use any tools to make it. Isn't that cool? But first I'm gonna take the shapes off of the earring hook so I can show you the traditional way of putting earring hooks on earrings. So the first thing we need to do with the shepherd hook is we need to change the direction of the loop at the bottom. So the loop at the bottom needs to be turned so the earrings will hang straight. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now with flat nose pliers. So here's the earring hook in the direction it comes in, and we're gonna take the flat nose pliers, we're gonna grip the earring hook with our, with our thumb and forefinger, and then we're gonna grip the other side, the loop, with the flat nose pliers, and then just turn 90 degrees. So now the earring loop is facing in this direction. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. Just like that, and you'll do that with the other earring hook as well, which I've already done. So now I'm going to take my six millimeter size jump ring and we need to open it to slide on the earring hook and the earring shapes. And I like to put the opening of the jump ring up top and then I put two pair of flat nose pliers on either side of the opening and then I'm just going to twist one of my wrists to open the loop. You just want to open and close the loop like a door. You don't want to distort it out of the circle shape. And now I'm just going to thread on the layers of the faux leather earring from largest to smallest. And then we're going to put on the earring hook and you'll want to pay attention to which direction the earring hook is facing before you close up your jump ring. And again, we're going to use the opposite of what we did to open the jump ring. We're going to use the second pair of pliers and hold on to the other end of the jump ring and just twist back in the opposite direction. And again, I'll auto focus here so you can see a little better. And that's how you do an earring hook on a traditional earring. So I'll repeat that quickly for the second earring. I already have the jump ring on. 
I'm gonna put the hook on, again, just making sure it's facing in the right direction. Use the second pair of flat nose pliers and just twist them closed. And that's it. Your faux leather feather earrings are complete. I hope this tutorial inspired you to try making faux leather earrings with a Cricut Joy yourself. Even if you don't have my feather SVG cut file design, you can use the free earring shapes in Cricut Design Space or any earring SVG file you already have. On my blog, amyromeo.com, I also have tons of free Cricut jewelry earring projects and free cut files in my resource library. So I invite you to head on over there and check it out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.